fam, we are back on the CEO Pulse podcast where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. We have John Scholler today with us. He's the CEO of a and Investments. He's been um, in the entrepreneurship space, check this out, since he was 20 years old. That was 15 years ago. Uh, he's been part of over 15 uh, LLCs, different companies, and in different avenues, and you know things from gym to real estate. Now he's crushing it. Um, he made it to the point where he's actually doing and providing private lending out there. He has a portfolio of rental properties. Uh, and I mean, this guy, this guy works, this guy works. We're talking just before we jumped on, uh, you know, on the, uh, the essential, um, need of, of the hustle, right. But how you transition from that hustle to a place where you have more time for yourself and you're actually taking your time back. So it's a beautiful stage to take a look at, man. Uh, John, it, it's a, it's a pleasure having you over. Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate you having me on. Um, before I move forward, man, I want to I want to commend you on this. You're actually in a Playa del Carmen right now, right? You're on vacation. You're you're uh, you took some time off from your uh, vacay at the resort where you're in to come in and share some wealth and knowledge with us. So yeah, no problem. So I always say, <laughs> you know, you. always like one of the biggest things, like when it comes to being successful, in my opinion, like I'm not very skilled. I'm not very talented at things. At least I don't think so. But I always do what I say I'm going to do. So if I book yeah. this podcast with you, I don't care. I haven't even, I don't know how many people are viewing this or watching this. I don't care if it's one follower, one viewer, or if you're, your bigger pockets, right? Yeah. If I told you I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And so that's what I emailed you. I said, I don't know how the internet's going to work, but I'll, <laughs> I'll show up if you want to do it. But I think that's a word of advice. It's like always do what you say you're going to do is like probably one of the biggest keys to success. Well, I mean, it goes back to how you do one thing is how you do everything, right? If you if you half asset on your on your uh, responsibilities and whatnot on the even on the little stuff, uh, same thing's gonna happen. You know when you have the bigger responsibilities, it's it's that that, that habit gets built up. So, so yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, but give us a little bit of background on you. I mean, you, you're you're. Uh, uh, we were talking right now before again we before we started you know about financial freedom and and how you know kind of you got started, but uh, you have a very diverse uh, background. Take us back to when you were 20 and how you jumped into entrepreneurship. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So like you said, my name is John Scholler and I'm a happily married, uh, to my wife. Uh, now it's been, um, she's been with me since the beginning. So 15 years. Uh, and obviously I'm also a father of our, of our three-year-old who we just adopted last year. And so we're here on vacation, having a good time. And, um, this is kind of what we work for. Right. But yeah, it started off when uh, I was 20, I did not come from money. Uh, I was never taught about money. I, Roth IRA and words like that might as well have been Spanish to me. I had no idea what they <laughs> meant. Uh, so when I started off at 20, it kind of fell in my lap a little bit. I don't, I always say that there's always luck. If somebody says there's not luck involved in whatever they figured out or did, they're lying to you. If Jeff Bezos had all the ideas he had today, but was born before the internet existed, his company would not be at the scale it is today. So right. timing and luck always has has a play but i was actually working for a company doing like deliveries of big items like mattresses washer dryers gym setups things like that and i was just working for them part-time full-time when they needed me and i was going to uh community college for business i didn't know what i was doing i was lost all my friends went off to college i sucked at school i had like a 2.1 gpa i think i graduated 163 out of like 175 people in my class like i was it wasn't good <laughs> and I just, I didn't do well at school. It's not because I wasn't, I don't want to say I wasn't smart or intelligent. It didn't interest me. So I didn't apply myself. Mm. Now, what was funny is when I started business school at a community college, I was getting all A's and 100s and like 110s because I, I was interested. But in my same other, in my other classes, like psychology, I was getting like 60s and 70s because it did not interest me. And so I probably would have never made it through college anyway. But thankfully, I was working for this company that wasn't ran very well. Uh, they didn't know how to run it. They didn't know how to manage it. They, manage it. they said yes to everything and without the capacity or logistics to handle it. And so I ended up just having a natural uh, like understanding of this. I don't know why or, or why I figured it out or understood it, but I could run this company. And I did for the longest time. And they weren't paying me. They went gone like two months without paying me, which was not a huge deal because I was always frugal and had some money to live off of. Mm -hmm. um, it, but they went on vacation. And that's when I was like, wait a minute, you haven't paid me for two months, but then you went on vacation. And I said, okay, fine. Oh, that's an issue. Yeah. Right. But I, and I, even then I was like, whatever, I like this job so much and I'm really good at it. Like this is one of the first things I'm really good at. I'm understanding the logistics. I'm good with the customer service. The employees like look up to me. I was like, I actually mm -hmm. feel like I have a purpose. So I dealt with a lot of this <clears> stuff. 
So they got back from that vacation out of, and out of 80 some deliveries, I missed one and they try to penalize it for me. Now, keep in mind, I ran this whole thing, the whole operation oh. in like three different cities. Uh, and then that was when um, the lady at the mattress store or one of our biggest clients said, John, uh, I just want to let you know that we're getting ready to fire so-and-so. Like we're going to cancel their contract, but if, we like you so much that if you get a truck, we will give you the contract. And I knew how much that contract was worth because I used to get $10 of delivery, but the company would get 60. So if we delivered a mattress set, the company I was working for would get 50 bucks and I would get 10 of that. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. Oftentimes I'm doing the whole delivery myself. I knew how to carry everything other than like a huge king <laughs> by myself. I was like $60 of delivery, 10 deliveries, 15 deliveries a day. That's money. Yeah. When you're, when you're 20. It's a so I borrowed, I, yeah, yeah. So I borrowed, uh, I borrowed five grand from a buddy of mine, bought a truck off of, I think it was auto trader in Pennsylvania. I drove four, four hours to get it round trip, came back, ripped all the shelving that was in the back of it out of it. And I showed up the next day and got my mattress <laughs> delivered, got all the mattress deliveries. They gave me the contract. And when I was pulling out, this is the craziest thing. It was embarrassing kind of, but when I was pulling out from the dock, cause I was on time, the other company that I had just quit, they didn't know it yet, but keep in mind, they owed me for almost three months at this point. Yeah. was pulling in and we kind of waved at each other and they were surprised and I was surprised. And what? as I was leaving with all the deliveries, they were pulling in to pick up nothing because they were Man. getting fired. And then I just gradually took every contract. Man. I took every contract, the customers were reaching out to me. So anyway, I grew this into a huge delivery, I don't say huge, it was a small business, but it was doing relatively well. Uh, delivery service. But then I noticed that you can move. I can move students. I lived in an area called Charlottesville, Virginia, where UVA was at and was full of students. And they would pay me like $300 to move a few items across town. And I was like, wait a minute, what if I did moving? Yeah. And so I actually transitioned from deliveries to moving and I turned it into a moving company. It's called Moving Forward. Uh, it's still around. It's been sold multiple times. I sold it after eight years. That person sold it to another friend of mine who then sold it to uh, who owns it today. And it's actually a huge company today. They have like seven or eight trucks, warehouse space, all types of things. It's really cool to see because I started it and it still yeah. has the same name moving forward. Uh, but in this time, I was buying and selling street bikes. I was buying and selling mattresses myself out of another warehouse because I saw the markup and I was like, I can do this. I was buying and selling furniture. I did personal training. Um, I did, I did so many things doing like stuff like that. And then after about eight years, I said, uh, my wife was a finished nursing school. We moved away to travel nurse. We moved all over California. We lived in Maui, Hawaii. Um, and in that time we had some money saved up from all the money I'd been saving. Plus I sold the company. Plus my wife made decent money and we didn't have any kids at the time. And I was like, I want to get in real estate. Yeah. So what do you do? Look up bigger pockets. You go on YouTube and that's the you, natural YouTube thing. You find university. Out. Yeah. And so I started doing that. And uh, but we lived we were living in places like Maui, uh, L.A., uh, San Francisco, where to get started, I had money, but I didn't have California money. <laughs> That's how I told <laughs> yeah. people. Um, especially not to put all in your first deal because it's scary. Right. Yep. So then my wife actually decided to go back to nurse anesthesia school and got accepted into Marshall University in Charleston, West Virginia, where I started researching anybody who's anybody doing real estate there. I'm going to connect with them immediately. Listen to what I'm doing here, because this is the probably the turning point for probably my probably a turning point for my entrepreneurship and life in general. But I took action to look up these people and find these people doing something. And I put myself around them intentionally. Yeah. They weren't going to call me. They didn't know. They didn't even know me. Right. So I put myself in their presence. And it just so happened that I met with a bunch of them. But Andrew, Steve and I kicked it off immediately. I had skills they needed. They had skills that I needed. And we came together and within three months, we were essentially partners. It was, it was crazy, right? Because they already had it, their own thing going for two years. Wow. Uh, How long ago was this? This was five years ago. Five years and they had ago. already been going for two years. Yeah. So you, you were, I mean, you were pretty much in the, in the hustle uh, trenches for, for your twenties, right? You know, oh, 10 years. Man, yeah. I was, I think, I think, bro, I think your story, your story and mine overlap quite well. Cause I launched my first business. Uh, I started when I was 20. I, I officially got, you know, launched when I was 21. It was a transportation business. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of overlap here and like, you know, similar experiences. It's pretty cool. Um, That's and I cool. had, my, that business too, I had it for eight years and then I sold it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, so, yeah. So I don't know what, what your experience was, but mine was 
I knew how to run the business. I did not know how to work on the business. So I couldn't separate myself. I was on every delivery, every move. And even if I had employees, yeah. I was with them because I had trust issues. And are they going to do as good a job as me? Are they going to tr treat right. the customer right? right. Are they going to steal? These things all ran through my mind. And I worked up a good reputation. I was a five-star company on Google. And so I never, looking back today, I could have now, I, if I knew what I knew now, and that's what, that's always 2020. If I knew what I knew now, I could have hired the person that I sold it to or anybody else as a CEO, let them run it. And I would probably be making no less than a half a million a year remote, just right. making sure the operation runs well, because the, the company did that type of revenue. And if I would have known how to hire and work on the company, not in the company, Oh man, I regret selling it. Um, I do when I don't because now, because I didn't know what I knew then. So you, yeah. I always think that like people look back and regret this and regret that. Well, then you were a different person then. You made the best decision you knew how to then. So you can't really blame yourself. But yes, if I knew what I knew now, I would have just put a CEO in place, a manager in place, and then just let that thing cash flow to me um, with, relative, with relative ease because of how I knew to run it. But anyway, right. I didn't. Um, and I just moved on to other things like real estate. Yeah, I mean, it, when you're in a space like that, it's it's uh, you can come in as a you know more of a consultant basis, right? And then as opposed to having you know to be there, especially in something that takes a lot of logistics. I mean, you have scheduling, you have maintenance, you have all kinds of stuff that play into anything that has vehicles, right? So yes. just the, the nature of that beast is different. Um, but yeah, no, I completely agree, man. It's it's uh, I, I was micromanaging a lot because again, my thing was quality. I couldn't compete in size. Uh, so they're, you know, they're not going to beat us in quality. Like that's how I was able to get the contracts that I was able to get state contracts and stuff like that. Um, and, um, and yeah, I mean, we did well, but I got burned. I mean, I was 26 years old and, and, and burned out because I was, I was just in it, in it, in it. Uh, the big lesson, the big takeaway for me there was, you know, hustle is a season, right? It's not a business strategy. Uh, so I started to kind of step back a little bit from it and then start delegating and, and creating systems and processes behind the thing. Uh, and I mean, it worked because a couple of years later, I was able to flip, you know, sell the property so, or sell the, uh, not the, uh, the company. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then during the interim, I, I jumped into, into real estate as well. Um, so, dude, I mean, you, you had you went from that and then you also had a gym. You uh, you uh, how many different businesses or, or, or um, verticals have you tapped into? So, yeah, I, I mean, probably uh, too many, right? So that's yeah. what I was trying to tell you before we got on the podcast was that um, I, I was trying to do everything. Yeah. And like you, I, I probably got burnt out. I probably said yes to too many things. Um, and uh, sorry, you're in the video. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's good. Okay. Had a so, guest. Uh, they just got back. From, they, my wife and daughter just got back from the buffet. <laughs> Um, so yes, I probably said yes to too many things. Um, and that was, uh, the, the gym that I liked the gym. Cause I always, I was always been into fitness. I started yeah. personal training and then it was just a natural thing, but I took the first thing that came to me with the first opportunity, which was a CrossFit gym. And I knew nothing about CrossFit, but I knew how to run a business and I knew about exercise and fitness and I was passionate about it. So yeah. I said, let's do it. And we jumped into that head first and it worked. It's still running today. We sold our, uh, sold my 50% ownership, um, I think beginning of, of 2020 and, uh, it's still going well, but it just, it was one of those things that it was taking energy from me. All these things were taking energy in multiple directions. And the other thing too, is you got to be careful of this is like, take this as a lesson. If you're out there listening, try not to turn every hobby into a business. That is my, that's, that was a thing I'm always doing. I did it with photography. I, I, you know, I was a nationally published photographer, but I just started because I wanted to take photos, but I had to turn it into, yeah. how do I get paid? How do I get published? Same thing with the gym. I was like, I enjoy working out. How do I, how do I get paid for this? And this is a romance. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, but it, at the same time, it, it took away from my passion for it. Yeah. I was focused more on, again, on the business and making sure the business grew and my health started to slip from a, not like crazy, but I just wasn't into working out as much. I couldn't go in the gym without fixing something or cleaning something or asking a customer if they needed something. I couldn't just work out anymore. It yeah. came to the point, this is crazy, at the end of my ownership, I was actually paying to go to another gym because I had to remove myself from my gym 
in order to lift, in order to lift and like concentrate and maintain my schedule and not clean stuff and not yeah. work on stuff and try to make things better inside the business. And so just be really careful of that and saying yes all the time. I, I was telling you before we started this thing is that now my mind shift is what's the least amount we can do to be as happy as possible. There's no such thing as ultimate happiness or permanent happiness. Yeah. That that's, doesn't exist. But to be as happy as, as much as possible and make as much money as possible in relation to that. But money being the third part to that equation. You got to make money. You got to live, right? Um, right? To do things like this. But I think that the more you progress and the wealthier you get, the money aspect of it kind of takes a back end of it. And then that's why I was telling you too that the well, the wealthier you get, the more money you get. It's actually the ability to say no to things yeah. and to say yes to things. Well, I think it, it plays into the uh, in, into the vision, right? A lot of times, especially we have like most of a uh, you know the entrepreneurs out there who are actually doing stuff uh, have <laughs> the uh, have the uh, the shiny object syndrome. Like, man, this is a great idea. I'm gonna go after that, and then I don't know. Two days later, you get another great idea, and then you get another great idea, <laughs> and and it's easy to kind of get lost, right? But when you come to sense and in, in, in your own vision into like, and I I can speak for myself on this, right? Uh, it, it's um, the I, I will protect my time even more than I protect the money. It, it's it, I'm, I'm, I'm to that point. It, it didn't used to be that way. It didn't used to be that way because I, I didn't know what the, you know, what the time factor was, was how that was feeding, you know, my, my human side, um, you know, money, pr achievement, pursuit and all that stuff was always on it, always on it. I'll, but what's the use, right? If you don't have money to spend uh, or, you know, if you don't have time to spend the, the the fruits of your labor it's just crazy um, and, and most of us start that right way you're going yeah. to like, if you're listening to this and you're just starting out you're going to trade your time for money yeah you do not have this you most likely and don't take this in any way shape or form i didn't either and it sounds like Raphael didn't either you do not have the skills or the talent or the knowledge or the experience yet hear right. that out yet to 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 work it the other way so you first must have to donate uh, you spend your time yeah right to build those things so that later you can trade those to get your time back and get paid for your knowledge and experience and that that that's kind of the natural the natural transition of things and i think that there's nothing wrong with, like you said the season i like that the season of hustle you must probably you most of you will have to go through that. You will have to start off grinding, hustling, getting up early, starting businesses, failing, struggling, not knowing if like if you were in the transportation, I don't know about you, but I was seasonal pay. That you know is it, my money went up and down all the time. I was moving. Nobody moves in December. I could go all of December without a check. I'm in a flipping business now that we only get paid if houses sell. So I can go two, three months without a check inside the AM investments. And that just happens. And it's always been that way for me because it's an entrepreneur thing. Mm -hmm. But eventually, like you just said, you discovered that time is the most valuable asset. Yeah. And once you reach time, once you reach that, you go, oh, okay. Um, another, what's, what's another 50 grand if that means sacrificing another six months with my family? Yeah. And then you're like, not worth it. Eventually you become not worth <laughs> it. But when you're 18... And six months and 50 grand, you're probably going to sacrifice almost anything to get to that, right? And that's oh, fine. Yeah. Just understand it's a natural transition. Yeah, it, it's almost like a rite of passage, right? It, it reminds me of that whole uh, the hero's journey type of deal. You go through the trenches and, and you have to put in the work. And what it does too is I think as we're going through that process, you know, whatever your industry, it doesn't matter what the industry is. If you have, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to come across challenges. You're, you're going to have to you be a problem solver. You're going to have to figure shit out, right? Um, but what it, uh, and, and what it does, it, like, it just builds that tenacity for for the future stuff it's um and and anybody who's out there if you if you just do this for a minute right and think back about like for example the problems that you thought were problems uh 10 years ago you've been at it for 15 right um 10 years ago you would come across a, a problem that you would consider a problem back then now you see that kind of stuff uh and it's like okay that's that's you know it's peanuts um yep. and it's it's uh because the you know the the skin gets thicker right but the experience also adds up and and that really opens up to that to that appreciation of time it's just you know part of the journey i think um i don't know it may call me crazy but i think that's how it works <laughs> no yeah exactly like everything i say before i say yes to anything now i say yeah. how much time will that take away from my, me and my health 
and my family yeah. Yeah. before yeah. I say yes. And if that, if, if, if it's it, now it's to the point, it's almost like any time, right? My daughter's yeah. three and they grow up. So do you have kids? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, you know, they grow up like quick. It yeah. happens before, before you can blink. And so, um, you know, she came to us at 11 months. Uh, we adopted her. She came to us at 11 months and she's already three and a half. And it's like, where did the time go? Where, where did the freaking time go? And it's yeah. just like, I don't want to miss any of that. If I, if I can help it, I want to miss as little as that as possible. And so for anything that comes to me these days, it's like, um, I try to say, I tried to say no to as much as possible. Now, like even I'm not perfect at that and no offense to you, but taking this podcast, now, I did book this before we knew about the vacation. Otherwise, I wouldn't have booked it. But I'm doing an hour podcast or hour long instead of playing with my daughter at the pool. So yeah. I can even improve at this. But again, this was kind of a, like a one-off scenario. I booked this podcast before I knew we were coming here. We booked this trip last minute. But that's just an example. Like, I don't want to be doing... I, you know, what was funny. I, I had to do some work. I had a bookkeeper quit on Monday before, I, before we came down here. It was like worst timing. Um, and so I was out yesterday morning out uh, on the beach working at the adults only section, getting some work done before my wife and daughter woke up. And I took the picture of like the, the laptop with the beach in the background, yeah. you know, the, like the old hustle thing. And I haven't wrote this up yet, but I'm going to make a post that this isn't cool. Like this isn't <laughs> cool. I am. The fact that I'm working on vacation is actually not cool. Right. Yeah. I should just be spending that time actually relax, relaxing and being on this vacation and this travel with my daughter and my wife and focusing on them like the hustle <clears> thing <throat> all the time and never turning off the switch. It's really not as cool as it's projected all the time. And I think that Instagram and YouTube have ran with it. And again, it serves its purpose. But people get completely they almost it lets them become their identity. Like yeah. If they're not working, they feel bad about themselves and like they can't even relax for five minutes or Grant Cardone or one of these guys is telling them, no, you need to 10 exit. You need never rest. <laughs> and it's like, just be careful with that for your mental health and for everything else. I mean, I think you hit it. You're hitting the nail right on the head. I mean, mental health, uh, you know, is is prime. I mean, it's the first thing. If that's not right, if that's not wired right, your results are not going to be wired right. Um, and I, I, I mean, I really do think it takes it all back, you know, to... Uh, to the ability to own your options, right? It, it's what's your vision like? What are, what are you really striving for? Okay, yeah, you're gonna put in 80 hours a week if you have to, right? Like that's that's a chip we have on, on our shoulders. That's that's a given. If I if I have to, if I'm in a project or whatever, um, but now I understand that it's a, it's a it's a short period of time. It's not a it's it's not the way I do business anymore. You know what I mean? Um, and and yeah, I mean I get it. As entrepreneurs, I think we have we have this this almost we get we have we got to have a notion of counterbalance it's hard to be balanced right all the time whatnot because you get you know shit like your your accountant being thrown at you last minute type of stuff but you find ways to counterbalance that and and, and if um and if if your time is dedicated you know it's being spent in one particular place uh for example family and being there the beingness i think is what really makes it and we have the opportunity to create that space for us as entrepreneurs um I, I love it, man. And so, so how did you evolve from, I mean, you went through, you know, several different businesses, jumped into real estate, and then now you're, you're tapping into, um, into private money, right? You have your own personal portfolio. You're actually doing private money now. And, and, uh, I mean, it sounds like it's one of the, the best things that you've, you've, uh, you've done. Yeah. Right? I, so how A&M investments work with my partners is we actually, We've done over 180 flips and all of that money is borrowed from private investors. Mm -hmm. So probably for the first, I want to say five or six months of working with them, Rian and I had money, but we didn't tell anybody. Like we were against like saying we had any money. We were against talking about wealth in general, just from like, I have trust issues. I didn't want people to take advantage of me. I didn't want people to try to steal from me. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want people to associate with me differently because I had money and build false relationships. Mm. So I was, I was like, Andrew and Steve didn't even know I had money at first, right? They just knew I had knowledge of how to run a business and probably figured with what they were learning from me that, and how I acted and stuff that I probably had some money, but they probably didn't know how much or anything like that. I wasn't one to brag. I don't buy fancy things. I don't like, we don't do that. The most money we spend even today is like really on travel, right? We drive older cars. We live in a modest townhouse, um, but, um, how that, what happened was our very first real estate investment was through A&M and it was a house as a rancher. 
and it needed minimal work. We were going to, sorry, it needed a lot of work, but we we're going to try to sell it kind of as is because it was such a good deal we were getting. I think it was like $115,000 to purchase and we could re, we could theoretically resell it for like 170 quickly. Mm. And I was like, Rihanna, I think we want to do one. Let's just do it. We keep talking about it. We haven't done it. Let's just do it. We got to do this eventually. And so I said, I was like standing, we were sitting on the end of the truck after walking through the house. And I looked at Andrew and Steve and I said, I'll do this one. And I think they were both like, what do you mean? You'll do? like, I said, I'll invest on this house. And I was like, let's just do it. <laughs> and they were like, okay. So it was $115,000 all in on that first investment. Plus about five grand in repairs. We had to do some cleaning stuff and I got the pool. It had a pool and I put a lot of money into the pool because I knew that would be a selling feature because it was summer. Yeah. It, man, I was so nervous. I was so I I was like $115,000 out of our pocket. This I'm I'm freaking out. I it went into contract within the first 3 weeks and then it fell out of contract and I was like, "Oh no, it's never going to sell." I told Rihanna, I was in the shower one night, I called her in, I said, "Babe, I I am freaking out. I think I lost our money. We lost our investment." Like I don't know what and all this is like looking back is funny to me because we would have never lost our whole investment. Worst case, we would have got our money back out of it. Worst case, but it didn't feel that way. I was freaking out. I'd worked, we had worked so hard for this money and we've saved up and uh, it sold. It sold and we made like 20 grand on the deal. Uh, somebody bought it for all cash. It was, the deal went smoothly. And then since then, we've probably funded over 25 houses inside of a and Investments and probably done another probably 10 or 15 on our own. Uh, we probably have, we have close to a million dollars out right now just in private money that is working. And this guy's- guys, yeah. This is just working. Like we vet, we vet the borrower. We get there, we get their um, references. We call their references. We check them all. They have a whole list they got to go through with us. All of their social media accounts. They have to have two calls with us, interview with us. They have to have done one prior deal at least. If they have not done a prior deal, the rates go pretty high because you're dang, you're not dangerous. You're risky. Your yeah. risk goes up. So as your risk comes down, our terms get lower. Um, but man, we gotta we've. This has been the best thing for us because we have rentals, they're work. There's some work there and we have some good rentals and we have good tenants, but they're work. I mean, yeah. you got to turn them over. You got to manage the property manager. You're always getting phone calls. You got to do and like it's, it's not a lot of work, relatively speaking. Let me step back. Okay. But it's more work than private money lending. It's not truly <laughs> passive income, no matter how somebody pitches it. Yeah. But private money lending, we literally walk into the bank after we vet the, the, um, the client, we wire the money. Sometimes we do draws. So we have to go to the bank a few times because we wire a little bit at a time and then they wire us money back. So it's almost the first of the month and we will probably get, uh, I think we have five properties, six properties out right now. Um, money will just start coming in on the first, right? Yeah. So, some at 12%, some at 14%, some at 10%, depending on how the deal was structured. And that's and it. Risk. Yeah. Right. And the risk is low because we have a, we have a deed of trust um, secured by the asset yeah. secured by the asset and i and i know how to vet an asset so i know that i'm not over lending on the property yeah. so if these people choose not to pay me back it wouldn't be the funnest thing in the world but at least i can go grab the property and right. sell it myself if i had to and recoup my money knock on something over all of our notes we've never had a default we've never even had a late payment yeah. uh, we've had a few communication issues but i think that was just the person uh, but other than that it's it's been great for us mm. I love it, man. How do you wrap your head around something like that? I mean, you're, you're, because it's a big, it's a big leap. All right. It's a big leap from running everything yourself. I mean, and, and like you said, to a point, almost micromanaging, you know, to, you know, what you were doing uh, in your teams and, and stuff like that. Now jumping into something like that, that's more of a, you know, free flowing. Uh, do you have the, uh, like that need just to wake up and then do stuff sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. So you know, how do, how do, you, how do you, you deal quick... with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, with that syndrome? <laughs> all right. So first I'll give you a quick story. First of all, I'm still very active. Okay. Yeah. I'm preaching slow down and I'm preaching like, uh, you know, we'll be more focused, be more present with family and buy your time back, which I'm doing. I'm much better than I have before, but yes, I'm a very driven individual. I have to stay busy. I have to keep moving. I don't sit down. I, I have ADHD. I am you, you've just been talking with me. I talk quickly. I talk a lot. These are all things that, uh, that are just me. So when I sold the moving company and went travel nursing with my wife the, for the first probably four or five months, because I owner financed it. 
So I actually mm -hmm. sold it um, over the course of a year. So I still had some money coming in and I was still helping with the business. Uh, for the first probably six months, we lived in California. And then for the last part of that, we moved to uh, Maui, Hawaii, and the business was sold. They pretty much paid me off. They didn't need me anymore. And I got to Maui, out in Maui, oceanfront. My wife's making good money. We have, we have money. We don't have any kids, no responsibilities. I had never been more depressed in my entire life. I had wow. nothing to do. I had no purpose. I had nothing to work on. My wife would go to work for 12 hours a day, three days a week. And I would go sit on the beach or I would walk around. I'd go on a hike. None of the stuff I really wanted to do on my own. My wife and I do everything together. When, so when she's out for 12 hours, what do you do? <laughs> now, some people can just play video games or chill. I've met these people and I am envious of that. I am, in, I am envious that you have that ability to a degree because I, I wouldn't trade my drive, okay? Yeah. I wouldn't trade it because it put, put me where we are today uh, with the help of my wife, of course. I always give her credit because she's been incredible. Um, but I have to have something to work on. I have to have a purpose and I discovered that in myself. I was sitting on the beach and uh, I was just sitting there like sad. I was sad. It Nothing mattered to me. There was like the end of the world scenario. I don't bring up like, I don't think I was to the point of like extremes, but I was sad. I, I was like, I struggled with anxiety and depression my, my whole life anyway, but this brought out like the worst of me. I was doing negative self-talk. I was never going to be anybody. What I did in the past didn't matter. What I sold the company for it didn't matter. I was nobody. Nobody liked me. Nobody wanted to work with me. No and these are the thoughts that were going yeah, through my head. Yeah. I had to quickly find something. Now, that's why I said that AM was like a turning point in my life and probably yeah. not just business, but my life. When I found that purpose again, oh, it was such a lifting thing. I was like, oh my gosh, my phone's ringing again. People need me. I'm needed. I'm wanted. I have a purpose. I matter. These things all came from being productive to me. The money was secondary at this point. In fact, I did my first whole year at AM and uh, because I was, I entered, how I entered into the company. I said, look, we need to fix some things here. I will gamble my time that I think that I can make room for money for me to pay me back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just let me work. Let me do yeah. my thing. I did a whole year without taking a single dollar, never took a day off the first year in AM. Okay. All five days. Well, the weekends, but five days a week, no vacations, no nothing. I was in there fixing what I thought would be my the CEO, the CFO part. It worked out, thankfully, but I gambled that and I just wanted something to work on. That was what mattered to me work more, but it worked out, made room for me. I got paid back for all of that and then some. And we're, we're, I say we're happily married now. And I say we're married because we still have our problems because is, is, it's partnerships and they're, they're hard. I could do a whole episode on that. But we're happily married now and the company's doing fine and, and we're all getting paid. But I did that to get out of, I took that gamble to get out of nothingness. I can't do that. So to answer your question, the reason I wanted to give that example is know yourself and know better that I did a whole video on retirement is a scam. Sitting on the beach with a margarita is fun for about a day. <laughs> for, a little for me, bit. for me, for about an hour. Okay. So you understand what, yourself. You know what? My, uh, my, uh, my, tr after four days, I just get triggered. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It, 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 it's after four days. That's, that's kind of like my, I can be in, in Costa Rica. I can be in Hawaii. I can be in whatever. Four days into it, it it's, I get, I start getting angsty. So <laughs> not I, anxious. Uh, it takes, it takes but just me like, three days. It takes yeah. me the first three days to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> and like and like get it settled into the vacation so we we book longer trips now yeah because the six or seven day wasn't cutting it so now it's like a minimum of like eight and up to like two weeks three weeks if we go to europe or yeah. a, a month but it takes me about three days to settle down and then yes to your point i try to leave a little something on my plate to work on while i'm gone a little yeah. something to feed my appetite because if Emails i go five, or six, something yeah something, if I go, something yeah something minimal even a phone call i i do uh, i do a lot <laughs> i do a lot of um i do a lot of coaching on on real estate wholesale coaching and so we have weekly live weekly calls every you know they're 90 minute calls every wednesday and um and i mean i know that if i'm on a trip I'm, I'm going to need to get my, my productivity fix. And, 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 you know, the, the, the coaching calls are, you know, they're a perfect, you know, way to do it because they're, you can do a remote, you can do whatever, and then you're still providing value. Right. So I don't know, like we find our ways, just like you said, know yourself. I know that if I'm not doing anything, absolutely anything for four days, it's, I start getting angsty. And so I, yes. I found my fix. <laughs> my fix is, uh, my, our fix is, uh, my wife is not, my wife does not have that problem. Like we have thankfully, cause I want her to yeah. balance us out. 
but she has it to some degree and she has a really big YouTube channel. I say it's really big. It's relative. It's 85,000 subscribers, mm. but it's featured on our family and travel. So that gives me something to work on. I do a lot of the filming and the behind yeah. the scenes and the B-roll. And I like being creative and filming stuff. I was a photographer, as I told you, I still yeah. am, but I don't do it professionally anymore. So this fills my need to be yeah. productive. It allows me to be creative. And we work on these things and we get paid for it. And it's a write-off because it's YouTube. And my daughter actually is three years old. She's been able to fund her Roth the last two years because she works for our YouTube. <laughs> so crazy. so my, my, our daughter, Tiana, as long as she contributes $6,000 a year, she started at the age two yeah. till she's 60. She'll have an $8 million Roth. Oh, dude, I'm <laughs> telling you, it's insane. That's insane. I love it, man. I love it. Uh, dude, this conversation has been, has been uh, amazing. Uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, uh, I don't know, maybe reach out or, or, or ask you about you know, private money or any other thing, where's the best place to find it? And I, I know you guys are, are super active, YouTube channels and stuff like that, but uh, where's the best place to find you guys at? Yeah, so if you want to contact me, uh, Jay Scholler, sorry, John Scholler uh, at gmail.com uh that'll probably be in the show notes or you can see my name yeah. down here at the bottom there you go and then youtube same thing john scholler if you want to follow my wife and i's uh uh family channel that's for right now it's rihanna ferriel r-h-i-a-n-n-a-f-e-r-i-a-l but it will be the scholars uh soon and then um yeah that's kind of how you can contact me and uh, and then more than money. If you're interested in being coached by me, I don't want. I know you have a thing, so I don't want to take by that. No, 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 I'll, no. Please, please okay. uh, let us know. Yeah, my wife and I, and as well as Josh and Allie, the FI couple on Instagram, we host uh, two times a week a live diving into Roth IRAs, investing in real estate, private money lending, how to build wealth, how to save for a vacation. We just touch on different topics to help people reach financial freedom. It's called More Than Money, um, and I can email you the uh, the launch pass link to put in the show notes if. People are interested in that. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure they make it in uh, into the um, into the show notes. Absolutely. Perfect. Hundred percent. Man, I love it. I don't want to take uh, your your vacation time away. It's valuable, and you've earned it. Uh, so, so I really, really appreciate you stopping by, man. Dropping those uh, those golden nuggets has given given us some insight as to you know what it really takes to build it up to this point, and how can you truly live a life by design, um, owning your options and and um, and you know doing your thing so i appreciate it man. it man thank you so much for having me on always sign off with this always do what you say you're gonna do and get around the people that are doing what you want to be doing and that's no matter what point in life that is that's that's probably the two biggest hacks the books the youtube all that stuff do that too but that's not that is yeah. not taking action that is not that's not going to get you there without the other without taking action so I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, and thanks for uh, dealing with me with no no mic and, <laughs> and, and with the tank top in the hotel. Bro, the qual the quality is in the in the in the conversation. So Perfect. thank you so much, man. Thank, thank you so you, much. Bro. I appreciate you. There you guys have it. Stay focused. You got this.